Hello, good afternoon, glad to have you here. We are once again at the Presbyterian Church. We kind of do these in clumps, so we record a couple at a time just because we, we know we're going to need that as the summer gets going. Um, just, we get busy, things get hectic. And so this helps us keep up with it, so you'll always have a worship service. Uh, we're glad you're here. I'm joined once again by Pastor Debbie. Pastor Jill. And I'm Pastor Shannon. However you come today, you are welcome to your love. Follow along in worship. Now join me in the call to worship. Let us worship the triune God. Let, Let us worship, worship the one who spoke, spoke in the beginning and created something out of nothing. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one who took on the clothing of humanity to set those who were oppressed free. Oppressed free. Let us worship the triune God. Let us worship the one whose spirit rests continually upon us, calling us from sorrow-filled endings to bright new beginnings. Please join me in a moment of prayer. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we ask for your presence to enter this space. We know that in self-giving love, your very nature teaches us how to love one another. Father and Creator, Son and Redeemer, Spirit and Advocate, we call upon you to teach us this hour. Teach us to pray. Teach us to love. Teach us to be one as you are one. With all of our divisions we create with our own biases, from social class to race, from gender to age, from ability to different abilities, we know we still have much to learn. Teach us this hour, we pray. Amen. Our text is John 3, 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with that person. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that, that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you don't understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have, been, if I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. This is God's word. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be to God. Okay, that whole explanation of Nicodemus is super confusing and odd and really, we're going to reference Moses lifting the serpent in the mm -hmm. desert. I mean, yeah. seriously, there's a reason we like John 3, 16 and 17 as our verses yes. for that <laughs> yes. whole thing. Yes, that is true. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting text, though, because Nicodemus is a leader of the Jews, mm -hmm. and yet he visits Jesus in the night in the dead of night you know mm -hmm. because and, and so why is it because he's embarrassed to go and that he's asking jesus these things or is it that he doesn't want to be seen by anyone else what's the reason he goes in in the night and and, and sometimes when i read this i think maybe he was just anxious to hear what jesus had to say i don't know maybe i'm going down a rabbit hole but well, I believe that if you back it up to the next cha the chapter before, before. The, the religious leaders are starting to talk about plotting to kill Jesus. Right. And right. Nicodemus is part of that. So yeah. there's at least some reference, inference you can make from that mm -hmm. that there's some danger or some 
political suicide and going to Jesus to learn mm -hmm. from Jesus. And, and that's kind of what I've always thought, but I just found it very interesting that he he feels the need to go and gather mm -hmm. more information and clarify. Right. It's like the, this guy's got something, you know, there's right, right. You know, yeah. I think about that. Like when, how many times have we like been in like a council meeting or a session meeting you know, or a leader meeting and people are like going off about something and they're getting irate and they're getting upset and they're da da da. And there's somebody in that meeting who just says, has anyone actually talked to the person? Yeah. And so sort of I think that that might be, that might be there, mm -hmm. but it's clear he hasn't made it public that he's going to seek Jesus out for some clarification. Exactly, exactly. Right. And it's, you know, how we're willing to approach, I mean, we need to ha be genuine with our questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And Nicodemus, I think, was generally saying, I don't understand. Help me understand. Mm -hmm. Like when situations in our meetings don't go our way, you know, maybe that needs to be our prayer. Give me an understanding. Give me the wisdom. Give me yeah. what you, your will, not our own. Lord, Lord show me what I do thing. not know. Yeah, show mm -hmm. me what I do not know. And maybe Nicodemus was um, was doing that. Now I think Nicodemus wasn't he there preparing. Uh, spices too that was supposed to be meant for him but he did it with, for Jesus too no that was Joseph of Arimathea I thought but Nicodemus was, is but seen Nicodemus later Nicodemus was in, later there in the in this story yeah. standing up right. for Jesus and yes. on Jesus' side yes. you're right yes. he is he goes and he does still, his 180 and, yeah right supports. right yeah so and then you know, I've always thought, like, if kids ever listen to this, and here's Nicodemus says, well, you go back into the womb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the kids yeah. are like, what? Oh. <laughs> Last I mean, week when it was read that on my head, now you're <laughs> Exactly. Oh. I'm like, when you read that text, I wonder how many kids, like, go, uh, like, what? <laughs> like, I'm going to go back into that womb? Are you kidding me? Yeah. But when we think of rebirth and, and born again, you know, I want to talk about it's not just about a change it's about transformation I mean we can say well yeah I'll change my ways but I mean we can change how we live and ch I mean if we want to mm -hmm. but it's deeper than that it's not just we, change it's being transformed that's exactly right each we, and every we day we can change we can change we can change a habit and form mm -hmm. a new habit you know we can change that but it is Christ who transforms us. Right. There's a big right. difference. Right. Big difference. Right. Well, and I think that this lines up with like, because I've been preaching through Paul's letters, and this lines up with like, we had that Galatians, Ephesians conversation. Mm -hmm. There's this mm -hmm. new community yes. that Paul argues in those letters that, that we are entering into. And so there's a sense that, that's, that this, is, this is a rebirth, a newness, mm -hmm. a new life, a new community, a new creation. Right. Um, I, oh, my stuff is off topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Well, it's called so, a rabbit hole is what Pastor yeah. Nelson said. Yeah, okay. it, maybe it's a little rabbit hole, but like that rebirth <laughs> understanding. So I had a professor talk to me about, like, talk about death and eternal life and the whole thing. And, and he talked about like that language of rebirth. You can't, you can't know on the other side of that birth mm. what will be and what will happen. And so he said, you know, like when we're transformed, did you ever imagine in your life where God would take you? Oh, no. no. Right. No. So the rebirth we experienced through Christ was not predictable. Mm -mm. When you get that image of a mother's womb, what does a baby do? They sit in this dark space, they eat mm. off of their mother, they, they live, they grow, they swim. Their world is, they couldn't imagine the world we have out here. And when they're born, this world is bright and somebody smacks you and people are yelling and, <laughs> and somebody's crying and there's all sorts yeah, of right. stimulation. Right. And he said that's kind of where he goes with heaven is that if heaven's another rebirth mm. of us in the arms of the Father, then... You don't have any way of knowing what it'll be. Right. And so there's right. a little bit in this conversation with Nicodemus that I hear where Jesus is saying, 
you have no way of knowing what will be. Only right. that it will. Only that it it's will. like I can tell you earthly things, but this yeah. is beyond that. Well, so, and I, I can. I, I mean, if yeah. you don't believe the earthly things, what do you think? How are you going to believe if you, you, well, you can't see exactly and or you know, understand? What what we read time and time again is that we must die to our old selves. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so when we die to our old selves and we are born in Christ, or we are transformed, I have been crucified Christ. in Christ, and it is no longer yes. I who live, but Christ yes. who lives in me. You know, that's transformation. That's and that, and, and that's here. That's here and now. You know, mm -hmm. so if you if you are having trouble making that jump to the next level, you know, just think about here, here and now, dying to ourselves and living yeah. here. And living mm -hmm. here. Yeah. yeah. I think the thing about it that we want to be careful though is remembering that transformation and that life we live in Christ isn't something that any of us can define for somebody. I could not yeah. tell you what your transformative life will look mm -hmm. like. And I and I'm and I am not meant to come to you and say you're just not living a transformed life. <laughs> yeah, you're just not That's called judging. Not yeah. <laughs> Thou shalt Sorry. not judge. judge. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's so important because but mm. we laugh about it. But how many of us mm. have the expectation? We think Absolutely. we know what a transformed life looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so many times we set it up. A transformed life looks like X. And I don't think we can say that. Right. No. I think that the transformed life in Christ is something no one will ever expect. And it's going to look different. Mm -hmm. We talked last week about the diversity and the uniqueness of each culture, mm -hmm. but yet we were all unified in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to go there with this too. It's just, but I'm not making it very clear. No, so I think just, I get it. Yeah. So you're saying like the transferred life that we have, there's diversity within us. And each one of us has a, that different yes, story and that story different experience. But we, but we all, and, and, but we all, belong to the body of Christ. We all belong to Christ. Right. Right. I mean, you so. think about the generations. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, look at the generations. I mean, that gen we, call, we call it what? Generation gap, and every generation has a name. Mm -hmm. I mean, we put a name on it, right? We're like, well, that's Generation X, so this is Generation well, whatever. we got three different generations then, sitting here, you know? <laughs> exactly. So it's just like, you know, how can we, you know, come together Mm -hmm. and be united I mean I talked about that I think even mm -hmm. before that like how can we I mean isn't Christ united I mean look at the Trinity look, the triune God the Trinity mm -hmm. the Father Son and Holy Spirit that's a relationship yeah I mean they don't fight with each other I mean Jesus went to his father how many times and Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to come down I mean it's a relationship mm -hmm. And by God's grace, and by His power, and by His yeah. His will, we are transformed right. in Him. And that's the key. By God's grace and by God's power. There's such an element in this conversation with Nicodemus that says, you don't have control yeah. over what exactly. God is doing. Exactly. Right. You don't get to choose what mm -hmm. God is doing. The Spirit will go where the Spirit goes. Right. And the wind will blow, and people will be changed. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's almost like Jesus is saying to him, uh, people will be changed. Get on board or get, get out. Board. Yeah. Either get on the train or get on. Right. <laughs> like, this is, this is a call out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of wonder if that's why we see Nicodemus later. is because this moment, Jesus calls him out. Are you in or are you out? out. And is this Nicodemus' transformation? Is this his transforming moment at that time? Man, I wonder. I, I, if I got something this confusing, I think I'd be like going, oh my gosh. <laughs> my brain <laughs> would be going forever. <laughs> I, and and yes. it's so typical of Christ. He answers a question with a question, you know, and you're like, yes. just give me an answer. Well, he some <laughs> obscure story about <laughs> snake. <laughs> Yeah, it's like there's one time I think out of all the scriptures a disciple says why like in some way or form like why didn't you tell us this before besides telling it in stories I can't remember what it was okay. last week that I prayed about I'm like how many times did the disciples just want a simple explanation and he asked with a question and then there was one time that Jesus says something that somewhat makes sense and they're like 
I could see the disciples <laughs> saying, why couldn't you do this, I don't know, two years ago? Right, right. <laughs> right? Well, this is as clear as Jesus gets with somebody, okay? Yeah. But really, really, whatever this conversation is, we know it's a catalyst to transformation in Nicodemus' life. Mm -hmm. And so I just wonder, can you, can you recognize those catalysts for mm -hmm. transformation in your life? Right. And how is God using those to shape you? I, I would like to tag on to that. And you, please don't misunderstand because I'm not, I'm not making fun of this at all. But I'm going <laughs> to tag on and say, please, I challenge someone out there. The next time they're at a football game or something and they hold up the John 3.16 sign, please hold up the John 3.17 sign. <laughs> And see if you can't spawn or spark some conversation that way, because that to me is the verse that is so very important. Right. right. Mm -hmm. You know, God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but to save, to save the world. The world. Right. And then the three sixteen, we all know that. Everybody yeah. knows that. It's so misconstrued. But please be a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Go with three seventeen. <laughs> Well, because I think that yes. falls into the conversation we're having, that the transformation exactly. comes from God. Transform. Mm -hmm. That yeah. God wants to be the saving, mm -hmm. not us. Mm -hmm. Right. It's God's plan, and, you know, I mean, we, we honestly have it all messed up, but God still loves us. I mean, you know, we, we can go back to creation, and I'm like, well, he could have really stopped from Adam and Eve <laughs> after what they did, but... And it was God's plan. Blood. <laughs> I mean, the redemption that we see, even after there's so much pain or so much weariness or whatever else there is, there was creation, there was sin, there was redemption, and Repeat. then there's a new creation <laughs> yeah. that is coming, but not yet. Well, I got to admit, guys, that if we keep going, I'm going to rabbit trail and say that. Okay. All right. Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. <laughs> All right. Now let's go ahead and go to uh, prayer for prayers of the people. Almighty God, from the beginning of time to the end of eternity, you have chosen to use your power and majesty to love us, to redeem us, to shape us as your people. King of kings and Lord of lords, you became weak so you could confront the strength of sin and death, confounding their ridicule with your resurrection. Spirit of God resting upon us, May your power inflame us with your peace. May your peace touch us with your grace. May your grace fill us with your hope. And may your hope lead us into your kingdom. God in community, holy and one. May your word be on our lips as we pray together as Jesus has taught us, saying, Hear us as we pray, the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this benediction. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be light for the world. And may the grace and peace of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.